Oh, good day, everybody. It's Rich, and they're trying to kill me, and I'll explain why. Here's Crystal. Hello, Crystal. Can you say, I love you? I love you. <laughs> yes, and we love you too. But look, to be honest, they are trying to kill me, and I have already been killed. I'll explain. Um, five nights ago, after much systemic persecution, Someone came to my window, called me a faggot and a rapist, and um, I'm a dog, I'm not a family man, and I released a website called killhim.info, which is what the systemic oppression actually fucking did to me, and I suicided in Werribee Mercy Hospital in January, February, March of 2021. Um, it is not okay that I have thugs coming to my window threatening to kill me. It's not on. I've spoken to police. They won't do anything. I've spoken to the people who investigate police. I back. They won't do anything. They rejected my whistleblower complaint. I am framed in a number of ways. Number one, innocuous <laughs> zero emotion. Steve Isonetti is my former partner of five years who I was engaged to kept me in a slave-like coercive financial um, trap. While he worked for ASIO, the secret police, I was on a disability pension, earning $400 a week and spending my nest egg. He was making 400 grand a year or something like that. It is unequivocally undeniable that I should have a small portion I don't even want the money. This is not about money. It's just about survival. I've got a nip it in the bud, and I think that's one of the places it's coming from. Um, and I will give $100,000 to anyone who finds me a lawyer or an agent to act on my behalf for all these systemic issues that are attacks, vilification, and victimization on me via proxy via agencies, statutory authorities, local, state and federal politics and has framed me not until I suicided in hospital and came out did I realise this. I had made a complaint about a doctor years ago and I fought with much frustration with every agency kicking the can down the road, watching me become distressed at the pure frustration of being gaslighted, ostracised and rejected, despite unequivocal evidence in a sound recording, which was innocuous at the time. I thought I was going crazy, so I recorded it. His lawyer framed me as some kind of evil genius who's extorting him for money. Now, at that same time, the old landlord from where a former partner and I stayed sold his place for millions of dollars. I accidentally emailed him the pictures I drew of his house. When he knew that Steve left me squatting there for, for, for free, only because he could afford it, and I had nowhere to go, and I was homeless, that um, he said he wanted to do business with me. He gave me $100,000. I didn't do anything with that $100,000. I bought some incense, a crystal, and I think a couple of t-shirts from Redbubble. A couple of weeks later, I got a call and he said, it was a mistake. I've actually been in a psych ward and someone had been in his ear, obviously, but even if he's bad, but whatever. So um, he said, I want it back. What did I do? Gave it back. Anyone who accuses me of, um, of extorting people for money is a fucking idiot. Anyway, uh, further than that, um, so the Dr. Whitaker thing happened, and these are the, the institutions that covered it up. The doctor, I didn't want anything to happen to him. It's not even about Dr. Whitaker now. It's about um, the movement that came afterwards that has various genesis points and has framed me in exceptional ways. So watertight, my family and all my friends have um, uh, disowned me. Um, I've been, <laughs> how funny, I've been called conspiratorial. Now, this is what happened. that I complained to the doctor and went to the Health Complaints Commissioner. They rejected it. They're all in cahoots with one another. Um, now, they notified um, APRA. I, 
evidence will show I was protecting the doctor. I didn't want to take that evidence after he would be fucked. I wanted an acknowledgement that he, I had severely and explicitly expressed my desire to die. He didn't give me help and he offered medication that I then overdosed with. My poor memory is bad. I'm a stream of consciousness type guy, but when I got to Susie's after my dear friend Nathan Turnley suicided, beautiful spirit man from another mother, seventh dimensional heaven, he died and I only knew him and he only knew me. So when I saw his body in the box and I had no one to grieve with, that was very hard for me. I was isolated anyway, doing a PhD and that's the time um, I overdosed. And I, when I went to Susie's, I found the, over, the, the, the letter. It mentioned the doctors I was seeing and also a sexual abuse case in which, um, I didn't know if I was framed yet, I can't remember. But anyway, um, my own sexual abuse case in which I remembered stuff that had happened to me. Um, and th this was a huge issue coming up to be dealt with my consciousness, although I'd always remembered it. Because you're framed as a mad person, because I've written that book um, you know, 30 years ago about um, my experience with so-called schizophrenia, which I used a whole fucking PhD to demystify and unblock and um, deny. Um, it had regretful sex in it. It had drugs and all that kind of stuff. In it. It, it, it had all the youthful things. I forgive myself for everything. You can't rape the willing. Uh, you know, I've been called a rapist for that, and and it was at the police break up. The police are against me. I don't know where this persecution is coming from, but anyway, um, the gay guilts, all that kind of stuff, it all kind of expressed itself in, in an odd way in my um, discordancy because, you know, at the first consensual sex, the the, the gargantuan um, thing of holding on to that um, the sin of being with bad men. Um, amplified itself in a confusing time of not knowing what my sexuality was. It's not a crime to have sex with willing people. It, it might be seen as unethical that um, if people know you're gay before you are, um, <laughs> you know, there's obviously um, regretful things happening there. Hello, famous person I lost my virginity to. I'm glad you're kicking goals. I'm having a bit of a hard time. <laughs> but anyway, um, look, um, Look, I forgive myself for all that, and I forgive my, I forgive everyone, and I don't want any money. All I want is for everything to be acknowledged, and I want for everyone to be forgiven. I don't want anyone to go to jail, lest me, because I've been tagged in pedophile posts. I've been called a dog fucker, a rapist, a, an extortionist. I've been bugged. My phone's bugged. I have um, my computer bugged. I think I will go on. Um, so it went to APRA finally, and it took years, and they and they invited me in just to stick in the knife. Now I don't know why this system of oppression sets me up in order to aid and abet my potential suicide or my harm to myself, because they can, and they well and consciously are aware of this that if they extend delay deny, black, blacklist, ostracize, it'll keep on going and I'll be more and more at risk. And this is why this is a conspiracy to murder when I got to hospital. Now, the um, former partner thing, the um, the sexual abuse, oh, it's all adding up, right? So I'm, I'm doing a PhD. I survived the suicide attempt, go to H and Grove, come back. Um, 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 what was I going to say? I was, um, that's what my memory so bad. I am... Um, Oh, yeah, I moved into the exact same house. Fuck, that was weird. And um, left with the old dog, came back with the new dog. Poor Steinberg. I love Steinberg. But we've got Crystal, Crystal. Anyway, she's just chilling. And, um, yeah, so um, what was I going to say? And then I became so distressed from work. I worked for two years as a allied health professional, a registered support therapist for the NDIS, who is insured by ComCare through the NDIA. Um, I stopped work on the 22nd of January 2021 because I could not bear to face my client who I'd seen for two years and I did his vocat case. I collected his evidence of his um, 
child rapes and uh, incest um, over two years, which um, which I thought I was okay with. I was just doing a job, but uh, I came to the day where I was fighting the my own sexual abuse case for the over nearly three years through five different lawyers. They were, and they were consciously, I know now, kicking the can down the road to make it unpleasing and unpleasant for me and stressing me out and trying their best to through the systemic agencies because if I got justice for one thing all the others would fall over I couldn't get any justice anywhere so everything was absolutely maimed now these five lawyers I went through took three years for it to get in front of the magistrate that lawyer yourlawyer.com.au did not even give me an outcome that is illegal I complained to um, the person who was responsible for investigating legal people, and they towed the party line too. Also with APRA, I complained to NHP OPC, the, inv- the investigative body that investigates APRA, and all of those people denied that recording even exists, and it is permissible under, I didn't know, but the um, Surveillance Act 19, uh, 1999, I think it is, in Victoria. So that is absolutely legal, tender before a court. Think I can get a court? No. Think I can get a lawyer? No. Think I can get any help anywhere? Absolutely fucking not. Um, This was the beginning of looking back and knowing how heinously I'd been framed and decimated. And I'll go on. I then became so distressed from work I left um, because in another vocat case where I was violently beaten up and hospitalised for saving someone's life and I was the one with the bloodied face and broken bones at the end (laughs) doing the police report, they pinned it on me. And I'm like, how the fuck did that happen? Anyway, so that's the other vocat case. The other vocat case was my sexual abuse case. They let it go for so long that the um, ombudsman, the, the, um, I lost my rights appeal and I begged them for an outcome or some evidence and I threatened the law firm. Nothing could go my way. I didn't know why. I didn't understand why nothing was working. Um, and, um, the, uh, the, the, the magistrate finally wrote to me, she's fucking crooked. And she says, you were doomed to fail from the start. Now that's fairly colorful language for a sexual abuse survivor. I've got to say, anyway, um, that all went down and I became, um, distressed. I was distressed because of the abuse that I got from my client from the, um, long time battle that I had with my um, litigation and the the turning point was when I got the CD-ROM in the mail in which I knew it had gone beyond the appeal and I couldn't do anything anyway. So they've rendered me powerless. Okay, so this is that. So I stop work and so I go to HCF, my income assist. It has nearly been 12 months. They haven't paid me a cent. They Because I've got a public profile of someone with so-called schizophrenia, they said it was a prior existing condition. They argued many times. I've written to the CEO. I've complained to the Ombudsman. I've been to the police. I've been to IBAC. I've been to the Commonwealth Ombudsman. I've been to the State Ombudsman. None of them see any problem with them not paying me. I've gone to the small business and family. I've been to business. I've been to everyone. All the statutory organisations, .vic.gov.au and .gov.au are intensely and attack me or deny, delay, reject, blacklist, ostracise, and they do it via... Um, oh, are you coming for a cuddle? Um, they do it via um, a systemic attack that's prolonged, it's over time, and it is um, attacking me in a silent way through proxy. I know that's hard to believe, but once you add it all up, it begins to render this incredible persecution that ended in my death. So I advertise on my website, I'm, I'm losing my shit. My doctor's rejected me because he knows of the Whitaker case and he knows I'm going to fuck him up and I threaten him. So he decides to leave, threatening me with fraud. And then, um, so... <laughs> I'll try and be succinct here because it's a um, short video, introductory video to this website. But um, killing.info is about um, how I was killed in Werribee Mercy Hospital. No one advocated for me. No one stood on my side. And 
I, I didn't need mental health help. I needed litigation. They locked me up. Dr. Kumar was a guy I'd known 12 years ago. He knew of the ASIO stuff. He knew of my partner. He told me to get the police. And I'd actually recorded Steve um, um, admitting to me because I was afraid for my welfare um, of him admitting that um, his $1.3 million that he invested in an offshore tax haven was busted for him from ASIO, his place of employment, who gave him a slap on the wrist and he got off with a fine. And he threatened me with um, a hitman and he also um, stole my car and all my goods and all that kind of stuff and left me homeless. So really top guy, you know, present at a murder, all that kind of stuff. Just legendary. So anyway, it sounds like a bit of a James Bond film, but life's never boring. And um, I ended up in the fucking clink. And of course, my reputation precedes me. He records things. So fucking look out. They've confiscated my phone. They've stripped me of my clothes, my laces, everything. For four days, they rejected my medication that I did need. And they, 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 they incorrectly diagnosed me as delusional of persecution, but in actual fact, by the time I left after my suicide attempt, which was deemed fatal and a lethal injury via the Freedom of Information um, um, legislation from the Office of the Chief Information Commissioner that I had to fight and fight and fight for, I was dead. I was dead. That was it. It was that serious. I'd I'd forgiven everyone. It was so hard to do. I didn't want money. I wanted out. I'd had enough of suffering. This p- systemic persecution and oppression had rendered me a voiceless, incarcerated. You know, um, I knew I wasn't mad. I, I I was, but I was cast as that with so much stigma and persecution. Just like when they fired me from the age when the Herald Sun got my words and put my descent into madness on top. Gee, what top blokes they are. Anyway, we could go into that, but I won't. But, um, uh, and I took that to VCAT later on and I failed. And VCAT is supposed to be calling me today about all these issues. They're going to fail me again. And um, I'm being set up to fail left, right and centre. Now, I try and be quick. HF rejected me. They said if I get um, work cover for the same thing, then they'll pay it. So I go to Comcare. Comcare accept me. Then they reject me. Then they accept me. Then Paul Fowler, the guy at the head, he rejects me. Paul Fowler used to be the guy that runs WorkSafe. WorkSafe refused to help me with my appeal. My, in the meantime, my internet's being bugged. I'm framed. I'm followed. I'm under investigation. I'm banned from so many agencies from calling them, including APRA, Mental Health Complaints Commissioner, and all these other places. I'm being black banned left, right and centre and I'm suddenly piecing together this huge epic monstrosity of a force that's invisible and faceless and I begin to threaten people. Now I had cases going back years with the Australian Financial Complaints Authority and it was worth from a super perspective and a bank thing and other issues up to nearly $2 million. I begged HCF, my insurer and AFCA to release those overdue determinations and come to the point and provide me with some prosperity. The methodology for this movement is to deny me of a voice and deny me of justice and deny me of prosperity and aid and abet my death by making it so hard for me that I kill myself. Now, they were surprised when I did that in hospital. I was surprised when I did that in hospital. They locked my dog up for four days in this house. I said to the guy, if that had been a child, you'd be in fucking jail. I hate psychiatrists anyway. But um, anyway, so Africa refu- uh, Australian Financial Claims Authority, they refused to um, act for me and dumped all my cases or, or, or not dumped. I don't even know where they are now. I'm afraid to contact them because they've um, blackmailed me that if I contact them, they'll drop them. I don't want to contact them and lose a million dollars. Who does? I'm not after money. I don't want money. All I want is a simple life, free from persecution and fucking hitmen coming to the door and fucking, you know, being the scapegoat, you know. The scapegoat is the archetypal Jungian figure that um, people consciously or unconsciously pin their sins on and send out into the wilderness to die. Now, I'm, I'm a fucking pretty fucking legendary guy. I've got a PhD. I've fucking done all this advocacy work. I'm a creator. I'm loose. I'm fucking free. I'm decadent. 
a lot of people are fucking jealous of my life. You know, I know it's a real Aussie thing to cut that cunt down, you know, if we was too good and having a good time. And fuck, I've had some good times in it. So yeah. But anyway, um, that aside, uh, where was I? I forgot I was, what was I going to say? So all these systemic organisations have failed me, one by one, over and over. Um, a year goes past, a whole year. I am rejected from the hospital with under a duty of care, but I'm squatting with no money, no food, and no car, and no job now that I've been exonerated and I've been bankrupt. So, and, and none of that would have happened if... um if I had have got the money that I was duly um, entitled to, I wouldn't have had to go bankrupt for 30 grand. Anyway, now I've lost my job. So apart from having a, um, you know, being, <laughs> you know, a bit kooky and fucking, um, you know, distressed from the systemic oppression and having survived death, I mean, they killed me. They actually killed me. It was a, it was many sticks in a in, in the faggot of oppression that fucking knocked me on the fucking head. I actually died in that hospital. If anyone wants the old rich back, half his memories back there, and I'm a new person. I don't trust one person in the world. I can't go to the police. I've been to the police over and over. They keep coming to the door. I keep recording them, reporting crime. Nothing's done about it. I am blacklisted, whitewashed, rejected systemically across the board right to the top i've got letters from greg hunt i've got no response from fucking katie hall i've got no response from fucking what was the other guy's name um mark dreyfus none from adam ban um i've sp- i've spoke to um um dan andrews and he he seemed to acknowledge that i was mad but none of the injustice issues so he sent me to the hospital uh, Northwest Sarah Mental Health Service, which is, of course, where I've worked, because I've fucking worked everywhere, including the age of the Herald Sun. And um, they had a conflict of interest, so they couldn't help me. So they referred me to the Werribee catchment, at, which was the hospital where I tried to kill myself. And as if I'm going to go there, like I, went, I was released to their community health service. I saw one, a psychiatrist twice in 10 months. That is more than a bad public mental health system. That is an arm of an hospital that absolutely knows that I'm going to try and get a conciliation or at least an apology or a suum for the, for the systemic murder that happened over years that was a systemic oppression that ended in my misdiagnosis and my mistreatment, the denial of my rights, my mismedication, and the framing of me um, by various points in my life. Now, um, if you've never, if you don't have any, if you don't have any enemies, you haven't stood up for anything. So I must have stood up for a lot because I haven't got anyone in my life apart from the dog. But that's all I need. Anyway, so um, look after that. After I survived um, and was rejected from the mental health service for an impasse. Gee, thanks for that. They rejected my medication. My doctor rejected me. Everyone said there was no conspiracy. Still, the exit notes from the hospital say I was not delusional nor psychotic and that I had um, adjustment disorder. And they only gave that to justify actually having me fucking in there. So in actual fact, I was absolutely sane and I recorded the takedown and I put it on Facebook in my defence and they threatened me with a $60,000 fine or jail if I didn't take it down. Now, that's fucked. That was on my property. I have exactly every right to record the police breaking into my house and threatening me with violence to fucking get me in the ambulance, which I then... I thought, I'll just go down and have a chat with them. It'll be right. It went bad from there. Anyway, a year goes past. I barely have a doctor. Family tells me to fuck off. Friends deceive me and um, um, they, they don't talk to me. I become a fight. I'm fighting this thing 24-7. I'm emailing people. I'm writing hundreds of emails. I'm going from every agency. I'm building my way up. So it goes from Comcare. And that uh, Comcare's rejected me. That gets sent to AAT, the Ministry of Appeals Tribunal. That's in a couple of weeks. That's doomed to fucking fail because I've. that's under the Attorney General's Department, Michaelia Cash. And who is also under that department 
is AFCA, is the Human Rights Commission, who handballed a million dollar um, um, dispute to the other team, mind you, and and also the Health Complaints Commissioner and the Ombudsman and AFCA, I think. So under that portfolio, that legislative portfolio, is the AAT. Of course I'm going to fail. It's absolutely doomed to fail. And and the government, who, who, who have killed me already and are continuing to oppress me, um, have got a lawyer, a highfalutin lawyer, and I'm just this fucking random dude. I haven't got one person in my life, apart from some random dude that I met who kind of semi-porked, and he's, um, you know, just kind of come into my life. But um, my poor family, I feel for, because they don't understand and they can't understand. They think I'm mad and they think I'm delusional and all this other stuff. They choose small-mindedness and they choose um, ignorance. And I, I feel for them because it's partly not their fault, it's how they've been raised and what they're um, willing to accept as part of the facade of the um, you know outside functioning, beautiful <laughs> Brady Bunch family that we are. But as we know through research, every family is dysfunctional. And they all have usually a scapegoat or a black black um, sheep. But anyway, in amongst all this, I have all this evidence. And it's all on my email. What happens next? Micron21, who are the um, email people who have hosted my website, taken over from White Dog Green Frog. Hi, Brian. Thanks for sticking up for me, mate. Um, and took it over. Um, they ex- accused me of being conspiratorial. <laughs> what a joke. And they knew I was in hospital and knew there was a court case, but they just went out of their way and they deleted every email, every website, every domain, intentionally destroyed the backups and maimed richmclean.com.au, which is also my ABN and my business where I earned 100 grand a year for a few years and intentionally financially fucking desecrated me and ruined my digital identity, my intellectual property rights, my copyright and ruined every opportunity I had for actually um, doing my appeal, for um, going back to work if and when I was ready. And, um, yeah, so that was fucked too. So um, I, I, went, I went to all the right places. Business.gov, they didn't give a fuck. Um, they said go to the small family and business ombudsman. Went there, they didn't give a fuck. Went to the communications ombudsman, they didn't give a fuck. If it's got a .gov.au, it's pitted against me. I should not have to burden hitmen, whether they be thugs or fucking just someone because I'm a famous person or my because my address has got out or because I've been maimed, framed, um, scapegoated, whatever the fuck you want to call it. It's not right that a, a I think, lovely person and a bit of a, um, you know, coming under the bar legend, just just confident, not arrogant, is being heinously, systemically oppressed by this vast um, network of attacks via proxy. Even so, I went to get some of my NDIs funding. They've rejected every one of my claims. I can't believe it. My situation now, I'm squatting. I haven't got a cent. Um, I find it hard to feed the dog. I've I've made this website, killim.info, because they are going to kill me. They are going to kick the can down the road so far, because it's too far now to travel back. If if that if that recording original recording dot by Dr. Whitaker gets heard by court, he's done for uh, whatever a medical malpractice professional negligence. And and all the other crimes that come so thick and fast after that, the former partner to dispute. The, the the vilification by the age, the framing on public television. So many things have happened. I'm a public figure. I've spoken in Parliament. You know what? When someone's kind of a big figure, there's a really Aussie attitude to fucking cut them down. And I've been cut down. Now, I've, I've been called all sorts of things. I've been framed. I've been tagged. I've been hacked. The computers, th- thing, everything. I, I can't even have a wank without someone fucking coming to the window and calling me a dirty faggot. Anyway, so I live in fear. I live in poverty. I have lived on about $80 a week for a whole year. I've begged and borrowed 
and tried to pay my friends back and the people who have helped me, you will always be remembered. And at this point, it is death or victory. I'm not going to kill myself. I'm not suicidal. I enjoy life. I look after my dog. I don't need anyone. I know what I am. I know who I am. And I know what I'd die for. And I know what I am capable of. And I am strong and resilient. That is my superpower. You can expect that I'm not going to give up. And you can expect that you will have to kill me. And this is my insurance policy for when and if I die or are killed, then you all have a little bit of blood on your hands collectively. That's the sin of this thing, is that uh, it's death by thousands of stonings. And, you know, there's got to be one pimp at the top who's who's responsible for actioning all this, and there's a few um, suspects as we go along. But that, that's the end of my rant. This is killing.info. It's Rich McLean. I'm, um, I'm, um, I'm offering to, um, if some anyone donates, to... Um, or I'm offering actually a hundred grand because that's that's I'm worth about fifty grand on paper. That's what they'll kill me for, and I can overturn this country. I got letters from Greg Hunt, mate, and all the other dudes. You know the big ones, Jack Heath, same CEO, all these other people. Um, I know what I am, and I know I'm not wrong, and I know I'm sane, and I'm a bit kooky, but I. I have never meant harm on anyone. I've forgiven myself. I forgive everyone else. If I get my way, no one goes to jail, but the insurance does pay the fucking bills. And I I only want a simple life moved from this house in another location, hidden, free from persecution. If you donate, I will give that money back to you when I win and I will give you 10% on top of it and another 10% to... Uh, agency of your choice which is a reputable um, charity or I will give $100,000 to the person who puts me in touch with a federal litigation expert because I know Comcare is going to fail and I'm going to have to um, go to AAT that's going to fail next week and then I'm going to have to um, organise myself in much distress to in, and in poverty to try and um, take on the fucking government. So this is my story. I'm Rich McLean. I'm signing off. Oh, so tired. It's so exhausting. I don't want to die. I'll live a happy, live a happy, happy life. Hey, Crystal. Crystal, are you going to say goodbye? Are you going to say goodbye? Oh, my baby. Come on, my boy. She's still got her lead on from this morning. See everyone. I love you all. I forgive you all. I forgive myself and... There are some actions that need to happen, though, and they're fair and they're equitable and a systemic um, persecution to pervert the course of justice is illegal. Victimisation is illegal. Slander is illegal. Malpractice is illegal. They can't get away with it. I know what I am. I know what I'm worth. And I'm going to put my big boy shorts on and I'm not going to fucking back down. So, um, you can all expect to be hearing from me. All right. I forgive you all and I love you all. I hope I, I have my friends back one day once you understand what I've been through because it's been so hard to explain. Um, anyway, thanks all. Um, please consider donating so I can <laughs> eat food. <laughs> I know I look a bit porky, but that's because um, cause I'm a fat cunt. Oh, sorry. I shouldn't have said that. All right. Um, I'm going to go now and post this to my website. Thanks so much for listening, and um, it really uh, the gist of it. If 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 you can't be kind to someone, at least don't hurt them. But to ignore this, that hurts me. So consider that, please. Okay, all the rest.